Hi and welcome back to Kamali's Church YouTube channel. I hope that you're all well as you come to watch this video. But having said that, I am aware uh, that some of you just aren't. And um, I just want you to be assured that you are in our prayers and to remind you uh, of our offer of um, prayer and support and practical help uh, if, um, if that is what's needed. So please don't hesitate to make contact with us. Now, uh, today I'm going to uh, offer a, a reflection uh, that um, is uh, based on uh, texts from Matthew chapter 15 and from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, and uh, in a short moment, uh, Betty will uh, share our, the reading with us, or the readings with us. And so we uh, look forward uh, to that. And then at the end of our video, uh, I'll uh, invite uh, Dougal to share uh, uh, prayer with us. So um, look forward to uh, hearing from uh, those other voices. And uh, the first of those is Betty with our readings. The readings today are from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, and Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9, and then verses 16 to 18. Jesus then left that place and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from those parts came crying out, Sir, have pity on me, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he said not a word in reply. His disciples came and urged him, Send her away. See how she comes shouting after us. Jesus replied, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to them alone. But the woman came and fell at his feet and cried, Help me, sir. To this Jesus replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the do dogs. True, sir, she answered, and yet the dogs eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Hearing this, Jesus replied, Woman, what faith you have, be it as you wish. And from that moment, her daughter was restored to health. Now the second reading from the Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9, and from 16 to 18. Their unbelieving minds are so blinded by the God of this passing age that the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the very image of God, cannot dawn upon them and bring them light. It is not ourselves that we proclaim. We proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For the same God who said, Out of darkness let light shine, has caused his light to shine within us, to give the light of revelation the revelation of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We are no better than pots of earthenware to contain this treasure, and this proves that such transcendent power does not come from us, but is God's alone. Hard pressed on every side, we are never hemmed in. Bewildered, we are never at our wit's end. Hunted, we are never abandoned to our fate. Struck down, we are not left to die. And from chapter verse 16. Though our outward humanity is in decay, yet day by day we are inwardly renewed. Our troubles are slight and short-lived, and their outcome, an eternal glory which outweighs them far. Meanwhile, our eyes are fixed not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are unseen. For what is seen passes away, what is unseen is eternal. Amen. Betty, thank you very much for sharing those uh, readings with us. Now, I wonder if you're familiar with the comic strip Peanuts. This is the comic strip that it features, and it's probably its uh, best known character, um, is uh, Charlie Brown. Um, but he also has a dog, Snoopy, who perhaps is even more uh, well-known and more famous than, than he is. Um, but in one episode of uh, Peanuts, or one, one strip, uh, Charlie Brown and his young friend, a wee boy uh, called Linus, are standing and they're uh, leaning, looking over a, a fence with their head in their hands and a, and a real glum look on their, on their faces. And Linus says to his friend, sometimes I, I feel that life has just passed me by. And he turns to Charlie Brown and he says, do you ever feel that way? 
Charlie Brown? Not at all, replies Charlie Brown. I feel like it's knocked me down and walked all over me. <laughs> Have you ever felt that way, I wonder? And particularly in your Christian walk, let's reflect on that first, on your service to the Lord. It seems like the world, for instance, has very little interest in hearing from Christians and hearing what we have to say and we're instructed to go and share the gospel and tell about the good news and so that can be discouraging of course and it'd be awfully easy just to give up on that task. The pandemic has posed many challenges too, new challenges in some regards for the church and let's be let's be honest about it, let's be frank, though we have fared relatively well uh, here at Kamiles, we have not emerged uh, completely unchanged nor unscathed for the wider church and some congregations it's an even more difficult story and so the temptation is there too to give up all our plans have had to change we have faced setbacks and it would be easy perhaps just to throw in the towel and when you're striving to do the right thing here's another example when you're working for the growth of God's kingdom and you find yourself frustrated by those who you would hope would support you uh, the thought crosses your mind to just walk away and these are just some of the examples of discouragements that you might find in the, in the Christian life and in, in your walk with Jesus and your service to the Lord and then there's all the stresses and strains of life on top of that money worries illness family problems and, and so on and so you might find yourself asking give me one good reason not to give up with all that's going on in the world and all that's happening to the church and all the big changes in our society and the, you know the turning away from God as we might see it and such like give me one good reason you might say not to give up just one now in response to that I can point you towards many examples in the scriptures where resilience and uh, perseverance are to be observed examples where such uh, resilience and perseverance reaped rewards too. Joseph's story is the one that jumps to mind. Hated and, and, and bullied by your brothers, taken into slavery, uh, lied about, uh, imprisoned. He could have given up at any of those points. But his resilience and his perseverance carried him through and much more. Another such example is found in the account that we heard read from Matthew chapter 15 where Jesus encounters a Canaanite woman. She comes pleading to Jesus that he might help her daughter who is described as demon possessed. Now whatever that looks like and whatever the manifestations of that, whatever the symptoms of that are, all we uh, need to know importantly is that this girl was suffering and suffering terribly. And so this frantic anxious mum goes seeking help and she goes seeking help from Jesus. And in the first instance, she's dismissed by the disciples who urge Jesus to essentially send her packing. And he seems to concur, stating, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But the woman is undeterred. She kneels before Jesus and even when again she is summarily dismissed, you might say, informed that she is unentitled, ineligible, yet still she persists. Did you notice? Shrugging off the disappointment and not giving up, which prompts Jesus to enthusiastically declare, Woman, you have great faith. Her resilience in the face of her daughter's troubles and her perseverance in seeking a solution, coming back again and again, even when being knocked back, these things are to be admired and by extension imitated in the struggles that we face. But these positive examples, and I say positive because of the end result, they may not be enough for you. Because you might say, well, what about when resilience and perseverance seem to lead to naught? I've been praying for years, you might say, for my son or, you know, my, my, my daughter or my brother or whatever to come to faith and no response. I've been working hard for so long and nothing has come of it, you might say. It's all been wasted time. I've put all this effort into my service to the Lord or into this project or, or this plan and, and, and nothing's come out. It's all been wasted time. Or you might say I've prayed for, for healing 
for my loved one for so long and they're still sick and they're still suffering so much, perhaps with a chronic illness or the like. Give me one reason not to give up. Well, I won't do that. I'll give you several. And here they are. The first is this. When you refuse to give up, and that's what I'm urging you to do clearly, when you refuse to give up, you display God's glory. And this is what we are, where we turn to our, um, our second reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and Paul's encouragement to the Christian and to those particularly that he's writing to, but to the Christian generally with that message from God, do not give up. For when you refuse to give up, you display God's glory. Paul compared his and every believer's faithfulness in living out the gospel. He compares that to a light shining in the darkness. So when you refuse to surrender, when you refuse to give, it, give up, you're shining a light into the darkness. Now the enemy wants to keep uh, unbelievers in darkness. He wants to keep their, their eyes shut. He wants to uh, keep their uh, judgment clouded. He doesn't want them to know the truth. But the faithful, persevering, resilient Christian brings illumination into the lives of others. To give the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ, it says in verse 6 of our reading from 2 Corinthians 4. In other words, people see Jesus in you when you don't give up. They see Jesus in you when you don't give up. The uh, second reason uh, that uh, I would give to encourage you not to give up is that not only when we, uh, when we refuse to give up, not only do we display God's glory, but we also display God's power. In verse 7 uh, of our reading from 2 Corinthians 4, Paul talks of having this treasure in clay jars, clay jars which are breakable and, and fragile. And, and the ring clay jars, he says, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. The clay jars are us, believers in, in our fragile state, in, in these human bodies which will decay and which will die in the end. And so we should expect that we will get ill. We should expect that we will be hurt. We should expect that we'll suffer loss. We should ex expect that we'll feel helpless from time to time. We should expect that we would experience hunger and thirst. But within those clay jars, within that fragility, lies a treasure. And the treasure that believers have inside them, of course, is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ uh, that we carry uh, in, our, in our hearts and which we're encouraged to, to go and, and share with others. Now, in Philippians 4.13, Paul writes, I'm able to do all things through him who strengthens me. So uh, we are, are fragile. Um, we are, are breakable. Um, we are not immortal. But we carry Christ within us. And uh, uh, he uh, supplies the strength that we need. And uh, uh, he is eternal. And, and uh, all these things that Jesus is, that, that we aren't. And... Um, he, he, he supplies uh, strength uh, in, our, in our weakness and he takes our weakness and makes uh, strength uh, all these uh, and you know sometimes we may be tempted to, to give up the fight give up the, the struggle of, of living in, in, in these fragile bodies and in a world that is flawed and broken but Paul's words remind us to, to never give up to, to press on we have the help of the Holy Spirit within us. The power of God lives within us. We display that power when we refuse to give up. Our bodies may be fragile but our God is mighty. And so when you refuse to give up you put God's power on show. Now another reason that uh, you may be encouraged uh, not to, to give up is uh, that when you show the glory and the power of God, these two things that we've already talked about, in your life, you also influence others. 
you also can encourage other believers to keep going in their struggles, in their troubles. Paul was very aware that other believers watched him. They watched his life, they um, looked to him, for example, and would be encouraged by his example of perseverance. In, in, in verse 15 of our reading from 2 Corinthians 4, he, he writes that he did everything for the Corinthians' benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people, he says, may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. And so when we refuse to give up and when we persevere and when we show resilience, then we are encouraging others to do the same, helping them in their struggles. So sitting in church or, or watching this video today will be people who are discouraged. There may be some who are barely holding on for, for all that we, we know. And we don't know the ins and outs of everyone's uh, mind and, 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 and their circumstances. And there may be those who really are near the end of their tether and they may be tempted to give up and to lose hope. Your example, your courage, your resilience, your perseverance is an encouragement to them to trust, to believe, to not let go. And another reason that you might want to reflect upon, maybe one more, just one more. Paul encouraged the Corinthians to press on in their faith because, and I think perhaps, perhaps this is the most important of the reasons, as believers, we have the guarantee of resurrection and the life eternal. And not giving up is a declaration that we believe that. It's a declaration of faith, of our belief in that truth. We have the guarantee of resurrection and eternal life. And, and not giving up is saying to the world, we believe this. We believe it to be true. It's not just a story. It's not a fantasy. This is who we are and this is what we believe. Therefore, we do not lose heart, says Paul to the Corinthians. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them, outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, he says. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So we don't give up because we know that these sufferings of ours, these things that we're going through, um, will pass. They are not eternal. They are temporary. They may seem long and if you've struggled for years with, with, with a health issue or um, with family problems, or listen, I, I know how long that can seem, like it will never end, that there is no release or relief, that these things will pass. And, and what we have in Christ is eternal. We have the guarantee of resurrection and, and, and life forever in the company of God. In a world where there is no more suffering or crying or, or, or pain and not giving up is us saying to the world, this is what we believe. And this is why we keep going. We are convinced that God has a plan, that there is meaning to this life, that there is purpose, that there is hope, that it is worth it. And it's that conviction, it's that belief that matters most. Let's return to the story of the Canaanite woman. Notice, we've observed her resilience. You know, she's had these setbacks and she just recovers and comes back. We've talked about her perseverance, not giving up when the setbacks come. We've talked about her, her, her refusal to give up. And these are all noble and, and praiseworthy things, which um, in, in a sense, uh, have a reward. But it is her faith 
that is key. It is her faith that wins the day. It is her faith that most impresses Jesus. It's her faith, of course, that produces these fruits of perseverance and forbearance which she displays. But it's her faith that's key. It's her faith that's at the heart. It's her, her faith upon which Jesus uh, remarks. And so given that faith is the gift of God, we must look to God to supply that faith and in turn to supply that resilience, that determination, that courage and that, and that perseverance to, to, to press on and not give up and, and not give in. And we as a church and we as individuals are going to need that in abundance as we move forward in these challenging times. So most importantly perhaps, don't give up. Don't give up praying. Uh, don't give up reading and listening to God's word. Uh, looking for his guidance and his instruction. Don't give up praising the Lord. Don't give up worshipping uh, our Lord. Don't give up. Look at what Paul writes to the church in Rome. Romans chapter 5 from verse 1. Therefore since we have been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And is that not something to be, to be celebrated? Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So we gain access by faith into grace. We're uh, justified th through faith. And uh, as a result of that, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. We also glory in our sufferings. Even in the midst of that suffering, perseverance is produced. Perseverance, character and character hope. So don't give up. Keep the faith. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep praising the Lord. Keep following. Keep obeying. Keep loving. Many of you will be familiar with the works of Fanny Crosby, the, the hymn writer. And, and I'm sure that those of you who are familiar will also be familiar with her story and of, of the fact that she um, became blind at, at quite a, a young age. But she went on to uh, write it around about 8,000 hymns, that's a tremendous amount of hymns and songs and one of those was entitled Never Give Up and, and let me just share some of the words of that with you as we draw our time in reflection to a close before that I then hand over to Dougal. So let me share these words with you. Never give up, never give up, never give up to thy sorrows. Jesus will bid them depart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Sing when your trials are greatest. Trust in the Lord and take heart. Amen. Dougal will now close our time together in prayer. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that we can come to you today bring to you our concerns or anxious thoughts and uh, rest them upon you because you are the living God, the one who through your Son has purchased for us the forgiveness of our sins and the hope of eternal life. We thank you that in him uh, we are uh, made righteous and that we can trust in you for all things, cast our care upon you and uh, receive your blessing and so we seek it today as we consider the subject of resilience we pray lord that uh, although we might be uh, like uh, um, jars of clay cracked and broken yet uh, your encouragement to us is that we should not lose heart and we should not lose it because of who you are and because of all your gracious promises to us so we commit ourselves to you and seek your grace and your help and your blessing. We pray, Father, too, for a world 
uh, that is in many ways uh, so uh, at ill ease and uh, unrest. We pray for peace and security in places like Afghanistan and uh, in Haiti as well. Pray for the relief agencies there dealing with the after effects of the earthquake. And we pray for the folks in Plymouth who are still uh, feeling uh, shocked and saddened by the shootings uh, that were there last week. And Lord, closer to home, we uh, have our own anxious uh, cares and uh, concerns about family, about health, about uh, relationships and work situations. Thank you that you encourage us to rest ourselves in you. And we pray for the grace uh, to do that. May your word be blessed to us as we hear it just now. Lord, grant your, your care and your keeping. In Jesus' name. Amen.